Hey hi hello welcome or welcome back to my channel. I asked for you guys to send me some of your K-pop opinions and confessions for me to respond to. And y'all delivered. I won't be putting a disclaimer because I'm sure y'all aren't 5 and are probably sick and tired of hearing them. So without further ado, on to the first submission. Something about n hypen feels off. IDK. Like they don't feel normal. In all honesty I don't completely have a final verdict on your opinion. They debuted less than a year ago and they came out of a survival show. They had proper competition with each other so maybe that ongoing tension from I Lamb carried on to their debut days. Or maybe I'm just waffling. When I look at Enhypen, they all just look like they are having a good time together. But then again, who knows? 2021 music is not that bad. Come on now. It's bad sweetie. But if you honestly think it's good that's just your opinion. There was a K-tuber who was saying I was racist for liking NCT and that anyone who likes them is racist. Then that K-tuber is the epitome of a clown. As I said it's okay to have problematic faves. Because if we didn't stand problematic K-pop idols, who are we gonna stan? More than half of the K-pop industry has done at least one problematic thing. And yet they still get album sales. Just because you stan a problematic group doesn't make you a racist. You're a racist when you think their actions are fine or harmless. You can stan a problematic group if you want. Including NCT. I really don't understand the people that say we should unstan every idol and group that has done something wrong. Because by the end of that, we will end up standing like no groups. As I said before I would rather not be a K-pop stan than stan a group just because they are unproblematic. Visual ain't a position. I see where you're coming from. But I'm gonna have to disagree. Visual goes to the person who fits the Korean beauty standards the best. Sorry to break it to you. But not everyone can be a visual. It is what it is. I hate gendered terms in songs. Boy. Girl. Him her etc. I understand how that can make you uncomfortable. I get it. But I don't think that these K-pop producers really care. When writing a love song they probably won't think about using more umbrella and neutral terms such as they and there. I can't really say much about this because there's not much I can do to change it. One of my K-pop in real lives is obsessed with Jungkook to the level that she literally makes NSFW comments about him and writes fanfics. And I'm sometimes asked to proofread them. That's very toxic. Tell her in the nicest way possible that Jungkook doesn't love her. Jungkook doesn't know her and making weird comments about him is disgusting. Also for the fanfic part. I feel quite bad for you. That must be so melodramatic. Having to proofread that shit. I find Jihan from NCT uninteresting. I actually saw this opinion going around before. And I was kinda surprised to find out that many people thought this way. During NCT content. Jihan is just quiet. He's never overly dramatic and I feel like he doesn't express himself much on camera. But being quiet doesn't mean uninteresting. You just don't vibe with him. And that's fine. BTS are overrated. It's 2021. Haven't we been over this 127 million times? BTS have earned all of their success by working hard and actually producing good music. I personally don't think they are overrated. Why are we calling everyone overrated and underrated randomly? Like it's not X group's fault that your ults make bad music that it makes you feel the need to attack others. BTS aren't overrated, nor are they underrated. End off. People need to realize that some songs are not experimental but just bad. It's true. And yes SM I'm talking about you. Like honestly people can literally be releasing pots and pans music and y'all will be calling it experimental. There's a fine line between being experimental with a group sound than just giving them random shit to sing. Say if a group usually doesn't have beat drop choruses, or maybe they don't rap often, and they try it out for the first time in a new track. That's what being experimental is, not just bombarding a perfectly fine track with random sound effects and blatant noise. Idols with more sex appeal or more appealing visuals are almost always the most popular, hence BTS's Macni line. All I see is facts here. If an idol isn't visually interesting then they are definitely not going to be talked about. 
The first example of an idol that has a lot of sex appeal that comes to my head, is again Ji Hyun from NCT. We all know that man is praised for his visuals, and rightfully so because he is stunning, but being stunning also has a lot of letdowns. Do you know how badly sexualized people like him get, including BTS's Macni line, which I emphasize are the three youngest in their group, and they are the most sexualized members. Not like sexualization to older idols isn't bad as well but these are literally the youngest. Are you not embarrassed? Let's not even talk about how the Macni line of BTS were minors at the time of debut with Jungkook being only 15, and V and Jimin being 17, and being the most sexualized. Gross. I don't know but I feel like something fishy was going on with the final girl's planet results. I personally don't think anything fishy was going on. I just think the fandoms of the girls on the show just showed who had the most supporters hence why some people who weren't in top 9 before were able to debut. So basically just hooning bar he yay. Confession I used to be a teeny shipper. Well I'm glad you've moved past from those dark dark times. I used to be a Blackpink anti and one time I was talking shit about Blackpink. My friend who is a blink heard me and got mad and threw water on me. I should have stopped being friends with her after that but I probably would have done the same if someone was talking shit about my faves I'm not a blink but I don't hate Blackpink anymore. I honestly don't know the full context of what happened here but I'm kinda curious. If you knew she was a blink why would you be talking shit about Blackpink in front of her? That's pretty much a setup. Again very glad you've moved past those dark dark times. It sees B-side quality is increasing while their title tracks are decreasing. No, I'm gonna have to disagree. I think both the title track and B-side quality is increasing. I absolutely loved the crazy in love B-sides. And you know Loco is one of my favorite K-pop songs of this year. So this opinion gets a big no from me. The response to Giselle mouthing the N-word is a lot worse because she is a girl. What she did is not okay however comparing the reaction that she received versus he sung is totally different. Now this opinion just threw me off. I admire how OP was very respectful stating it however I just do not agree. Double standards in K-pop do exist. They are very prominent however I don't see the double standards between Heesung and Giselle. You have people on TikTok calling them Mr. and Mrs. Skirt Skirt 24-7. When Heesung was exposed for saying the N-word he was getting flamed. I remember it vividly. He was getting the heat especially from TikTok and Twitter K-pop stands. But the reason you may think Giselle got more is because hers was way more obvious. She leaned into the camera but with Heesung on the other hand. Till this day people don't even know if he said it or not. Some say it was Jungwon, some say it was a staff member or stylist, some say that it couldn't have been Heesung because Jake was sitting right next to him. People don't know and including myself. I don't know what to believe. And following that controversy with the whole protect black engines thing. We don't even need to go into that. That was a whole mess. So I see where you're coming from with your opinion but personally I don't think there was any sort of patriarchal double standards between the two. It was only the fact that Giselle's accusation was just way more obvious. And also I wanted to add, it doesn't matter if you are female, male, non-binary etc. Saying the n-word has no difference you still said it and deserve to be treated the same. And also it's 2021 if you are not black don't say it. Period it's not that hard. Idols are equally responsible for delusional fans. I agree. Whilst I do think that they are some naturally hella delusional people that believe everything. The idol behavior exploits the behavior of those crazy K-pop stands. Idols are made out to be these perfect human beings. People that can do and have never done any harm. And people believe it and suddenly get so shocked when they turn out to be problematic as. Same with the shipping. I know in Korea friends especially of the same sex are known to be more touchy and very close together. So when these idols be doing skinship and all that shit together it just helps feed these shippers with more delusion. They think that because of that these idols are actually dating. And when they go so far and start making those ex-ship name as dating proof. Or ex-ship name analysis videos. Gosh that just makes me cringe. You know how some idols have come across crack videos. Imagine if they saw those shipping videos. The ones that go so in depth. And they record their reaction to it. That will be the day I would like to crawl into YG's dungeon and never come out. Love Talk is the greatest K-pop release of all time. Period.
Cherry Young deserved the center dance break in Loco more than Rujin, but Rujin is the center though, so of course she is gonna be the focus of the dance break. However I do wish we would get a Cherry Young solo dance break, like she is the main dancer and is always in the back. She hasn't really got her own quote unquote era either. Hashtag justice for Cherry Young. I don't like Soyeon's rapping voice. It sounds like electricity, to be honest when listening to Idol's music. Soyeon's voice always stands out the most to me. I personally really like her raps but I don't listen to them often. And also how does her voice sound like electricity LMO? Twice is literally so overworked like girlies just released the feels in October and they're having a comeback 12th November with their third album that has 17 tracks like I know it's pretty exciting and that us onces are considered lucky for so much content. But at the end of the day the girl's health come first. Exactly. I know Nayeon said that they weren't overworked and that she felt jobless but still they are releasing so much stuff that it feels like it doesn't affect them anymore. I know a lot of the tracks are pre-recorded but they had a full album in October last year. Kura Kura in April. Another comeback mini album with alcohol free. Perfect world. The feels. Seasons greetings. An upcoming Japanese single donut and a new full album. Like all of that in less than a year. We all know Twice is literally carrying JYP entertainment. But I just hope they won't be too pressured. And I hope Jiang Gaiyan can recover speedily. I don't like Jesse. And that's fine. We can't like everyone we come across in life. There's always gonna be someone you don't click with but the only thing you can do is to just ignore them. My friend likes Jesse Oop. Another confession about Jesse lol. Your friend liking Jesse is just their opinion. Let them do whatever they like. You can support whoever you want just don't condone their actions. This video is getting well long. So unfortunately I'm gonna have to end here. Tell me what you think of all the confessions and opinions I talked about in this video. Again I couldn't add all of them so I apologize if yours didn't make it. Anyways I hope you enjoyed this video. Until we meet again.